I'm Jerry Lawrence. I'm in the Department of Communication Arts. Uh, teach specifically in media and cultural studies there. Uh, yeah, and uh, assistant professor there. So going on, I guess, my fourth year or something like that. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be here to talk to you about um, uh, the assignments in, in one of my classes, and in particular, an assignment involving annotations and using the uh, website Genius, uh, which used to be Rap Genius, uh, in case any of you are hip hop lyric fans and <laughs> on the site then. Um, but if not, don't worry, I'll, I'll give you a bit of um, detail on it. But just before I get into the specifics of the assignment, a bit about the class itself. Um, it's called CA346, Critical Internet Studies. So it's, um, yeah, mid-level class, although we have a, a FIG in the class in the fall. So I think it's first to fourth, fourth year students, like all the way through. Um, and yeah, it's about the history of the internet, and about current issues in contemporary culture. Um, even though it's a class about the history and the future of new technology, it's still very much like a writing-based course, or at least it was when I picked it up and started it. We have reading responses that they do every week. Um, there's fairly heavy theoretical text throughout the course, quizzes, essays, midterms, uh, and yeah, the final essay was the big kind of project. Um, and I had a prompt in the essay. Usually I had you know three or four prompts that people would choose what to do, and I would put them in a situation. You know, Imagine you're a developer for Facebook, and you're trying to figure out a way to get racist comments off of the site. You know, write an essay about how or uh, you know, write an essay explaining. Oh, I realized I didn't turn on my phone. Write an essay uh, explaining um, the the you know the term Web 2.0 to your parents and their friends over Spring Break recently. So they were you know sort of creative essays, but it was it was it was still the kind of standard essay. So John asked me to frame the talk in terms of what I wanted, what I tried, what happened, and what I do next time. So I tried to take that structure to heart, and I'll try and keep it to to 10 minutes as well. Um, so of course what I wanted is what we all want. You know, students so excited about an assignment, they'll literally put off like watching the Final Four or bad <laughs> football games in order to deepen their quest for knowledge. Um, what, I, uh, I, what I would settle for was just, you know, an assignment that, that better fit and met the kind of outcomes of the course, the themes of the course, uh, the, the sort of the sort of form of the course, right? Because we're talking about a, a lot of new technology, I sort of, it seems strange that it was just a final essay that was the end project. So um, students um, usually had to write, like I said, about a six to 10 page essay. And while I was happy with the creativity and the prompts and the way students were responding, Students sort of not so subtly, well, subtly, I guess, it wasn't like obvious in the uh, evaluations that they wanted to do more of this, but they were using a lot of web technologies and wanted to kind of expand the options for what the final project was. So I kind of floated the idea in passing of a couple different assignments. And what we ended up with was uh, the essay kind of morphed into four different projects. Um, one of them was a, a remix video or an explainer video, so they could actually do some video production to try and make an, a, an argument. Um, one of them was using the website Storify. Does anyone know Storify? It's sort of um, uh, a writing tool that allows you to bring in social media. Uh, the essay is still there. It's still an option for students who want to do that. And then this annotation assignment, which is the one that I'm going to focus on today. Um, so if you want to talk about any of the other options as well, I can do that. But basically, I tried to create four um, equal assignments using different kinds of web technologies. So this is the what I tried part. And um, it's based off this site that I knew uh, called Rap Genius. And if you search for lyrics of a song, uh, you will often, um, this will be one of the first sites that comes up because it's now a place that people go to for lyrics. It's basically uh, a, a site where fans of rap songs uh, can gather to annotate and discuss lyrics of songs. So you post the, the lyrics of the song and then people can speculate as to what they mean. It started as a kind of small community project, but it's become one of the web's go-to spaces um, for finding out about what a song is about. Um, this is basically what the interface looks like. You'll have a song, this is three different screenshots here, so it doesn't look this messy, but you'll have a song um, page, you know, for California Love or whatever, and then you'll have the lyrics here. You can see each of the lyrics are kind of highlighted, and when you click on one of the lines, then it'll pull up an annotation which gives you a little bit about you know, what they mean when they say Wild Wild West, and they're talking about not just West Side in terms of gangster rap, but also um, Wild Wild West in terms of the history of California's place 
uh, in the US, right? There's a line here, state that's untouchable like Elliot Ness. So you get you know, a picture of Elliot Ness, you get a bit of a, a background on it, right? So people literally sort of annotate every single line of a song so you can kind of figure out, or you know, again, because these are songs and there's multiple meanings, right? You have people arguing about, oh, here's what I think this particular uh, lyric means. <coughs> So I really like this interface. I thought it was really slick. It's very easy to kind of look at and use. And it just seemed like, oh, that would be neat if I got them to do similar things to texts that were closer to what the course is about. Um, I tried uh, using some other sites. Um, there's a site, competing site called Hypothesis, uh, uh, Google Docs, Learn at UW. None of those have like a kind of interface that's as easy to work with as this one. So. I sort of defaulted to this. And just as I was getting into looking to how I might actually do this, the site itself was expanding. And so it went beyond rap lyrics to start annotating a whole bunch of things. So they're now using it in high schools um, to annotate text and literature, Shakespeare, Great Gatsby, things like that. They also do um, tech news and tech websites and magazines. So there's a whole bunch of different categories that are now being uh, annotated on the site. They also had started developing some educator-specific features, like uh, an educator's forum, where you can kind of talk about how people are using the site, as well as a feature called class pages. So you could create individual pages for your students in case you wanted to be able to like mark a specific student without having the kind of public annotation version of it. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the, the point of the site. And again, you know, all these annotations, at least as the site is designed, are meant to be public, right? You go in, you make an annotation, and then somebody else comes uh, and adds to it. The class pages feature allows you to make that private. And so for the first version of the assignment, I just decided to figure out how this thing was going to be used, and I kind of kept a sort of private version of it. So I created class pages on the site so that each student doing the assignment had their own page. This is just the model. Um, version that I did, but I picked uh, a text that's not on our syllabus, but it's relevant to the course. So this is John Perry Barlow's 1996 or 1994 manifesto about like, the future of the web. Um, it's full of a whole bunch of rhetoric about how great the internet is and how awesome technology is. And I get them to kind of think critically about what's being said in that text. Um, so yeah, I have each student has their own page where they can do their own annotation. I provided three or four model texts that they could go off of. So they had a little bit of choice in terms of what text they picked. But basically, with each of them having their own annotation page, it sort of limited the amount of copying <coughs> they could do off of each other's um, text. So it was still kind of a, a fairly individual assignment. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could have had them upload and annotate on the public version of the site, or I could have had multiple students doing annotations on one <coughs> text. I decided not to do that for the first version, and actually, I still haven't fully done that. So we can talk about that in the q and I mean, I'm kind of using this technology a little bit backwards, um, but it's still a kind of interesting uh, use of it, I think. So yeah, each student was provided a source text, and they apply course materials and themes to it. So you see, you know, this is somebody commenting on, on this when they're bringing in course material or material from other courses they've taken, talking about you know, uh, what they think is going on in this piece of the text. They had to bring in citations, make short arguments based on some of the things they learned over the semester. I think I asked them for about 1,200 words. Uh, like I tried to make it equivalent to the amount you'd be writing in a six page, seven page essay. Um, it's hard to keep track of word count in this, but they, <laughs> they generally enjoy doing it, so I actually get more words than less. Um, and yeah, the assignment specifically asked them to expand on the text by critiquing it or providing further support for the argument in the source text. I also um, encourage them to be playful about the annotations because uh, one of the fun things about Rap Genius is the amount of different media that you can bring in. Um, so, you know, here's one where they're talking about you're terrified of your own children since they are neighbors <coughs> in a world where you will always be immigrants. Uh, and, and, you know, they bring in a JPEG of children of the corn. And there's more than one reason to be terrified of children, right? So they, they sort of add in kind of humorous bits, uh, whether with videos, whether with images, uh, whether with things like that. Does that make sense in terms of just like the general scope of what the assignment is and does? Um, I'll move into the, the, the what happened portion of it. Um, and I guess 
uh, the quick answer in what happened on the student side is that they, re they really enjoyed it. They had a lot of fun with the assignment. Um, I'll start, though, with what happened on the instructor side of it. <laughs> Uh, because just as I was hitting my stride with the assignment, uh, Genius changed its entire platform uh, and took away a lot of the features that I was using, so they no longer have the class page feature. Um, what they've instead put a lot of their resources behind is this web annotator, um, which I'll talk a bit more about and show you. Um, Can I, I just mention, Jeremy, this is a common theme at that active teaching lab, like people <laughs> right. are doing something and then, oh, they change right. the technology. Well, I think this is, I mean, I think part of what's fun about using these sites is they're sites that students are often familiar with. They're not sites that were designed necessarily to be educational sites. Like, I mean, even a site like Wikipedia is a really interesting educational tool, but it's not like necessarily built with teachers in mind, right? So, I mean, they know they have this active community of educators. The site was never built for that, nor is it specifically still intended to be that. Um, so these kinds of things are expected. And I mean, there's ways to use this new tool in wonderful and very exciting ways, which I haven't done yet. But I think you know, there's still quite a bit of potential. But yeah, so I've been just kind of reacting for the second year of doing, uh, uh, of doing this. But what that's mean is if I wanted to replicate the assignment exactly, what I had to do was set up private course pages on a blog that we run in our department. So this is now what it looks like. Instead of going to the Genius site, students go to the blog the, the course blog, and they can do their annotations here. So it works just as if they were on Genius, um, but they basically you know, can come in, highlight text, add their annotations, and, 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 and do that there. Um, it provides all the functionality of the Genius annotation. It just does it elsewhere on the web. But having the course blog means that you know, students can um, log in just with their net ID. They don't need to, they don't need to necessarily um, I mean, it's already sort of fairly private in terms of how it, how it works. Um, so yeah, the guidelines of the assignment changed a little as well. Instead of f um, giving them three or four source texts, I now get them to choose their own texts. Um, so picking the right text to annotate is part of the assignment as well now. Um, that also decreases the likelihood of them trying to copy off of other people because they, they've gone out and picked their own, their own source text. Um, And so I've made that part of the assignment and part of the grading rubric uh, as well. And then just in terms of what, what happened with the assignment, um, students spoke really highly of it. And uh, the first year that it was run, it was the most popular choice of the four choices. Um, it's changed, it fluctuates every semester. Um, but it's, I guess now that students have to pick their own text beforehand, it's a little bit harder than the uh, Storify assignment. The genius one used to be the go-to like lazy assignment because like, the other ones, like if you were gonna make a remix or if you were gonna do something, you had to do a lot of work beforehand uh, to get ready for it. Genius, you could kind of just come in at the last minute and say, oh, I'm gonna do this one. I think now that's fallen to Storify. But even this semester, I still have a quarter of the students in my class are doing this, so it's sort of on par with some of the others. Uh, the essay is by far the one that students are doing the least, if that's not, uh, probably not surprising to many of you. Uh, what I do next time, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not using this tool the way it's supposed to be used, you know. When I first talked to the folks at Genius about how to create class pages, they're like, why are you doing that? You know, we have class pages because we know people want to, but the joy of this is that it's public writing, right, and that students feel invested in it because it's something that is uh, more public. So I've been using it mostly as a private assignment. There's the option to make it public afterward. But in the working up process, it's a fairly private assignment. So I think the next step for this, for sure, will be to be out there and to go and try and um, let them do this live on the web and see how the process works in that way. Um, it's also meant to be a kind of collaborative thing, right? When you post something on Genius, other people respond. They comment on your annotations. Um, we've sort of taken that component out as we make it a private individual. And then I guess the big step for this is with their new web annotator tool, there's a lot of possibility to just go out and annotate any web page. What they've done is basically make it so that any web page on the internet, you can put genius.it in front of the URL, and it will take you to a separate layer of that page where you can annotate 
that page. So it's a bit hard to explain, so I'll show that. Um, but that's officially the end of the like 10 minute portion of it. 